Good evening. Welcome to Larry Rinker Golf Live. Hope you're having a great week. We do have some Father's Day gift certificates available. It's not too late. So you can contact me at Larry Rinker Golf at Gmail or my cell number is there. You can call me there and uh, get a golf lesson gift certificate for your, for your dad. My guest tonight, John Sinclair. He's a 3D expert. He's a PGA Tour coach. He has an incredible database of PGA Tour players with all kinds of information, 3D. And John, it's always great to catch up with you, my friend, and learn from you. I always learn a lot from guys like you. James Lights uh, is somebody that's going to be on next week. And you know, you guys are really pushing the envelope with the technology and the game. And, you know, the funny thing is, is so many things we believe to re be true are not true. We actually measure them, aren't they? Yeah, that's correct. I mean, we have, that's been my whole drive is to try to make sure that I'm measuring and I understand exactly what the swing is doing. Now, us coaching, we may say, who knows what we may say to get the player to do something. That That's not what I'm after on that. But right. certainly to find out exactly why the, the club moves the way it does or the body moves the way it does, I, I think we need to have a search for what correct is. Yeah, we do. And, and one of your things uh, that you have come up with is this, you did this wrist angle video but it's probably what two years old now. Uh, close, maybe a year and a half. Yeah, I don't know quite but two years. It's not the motion; it's the position, isn't it? That's the other way around. It's not the position; it's the motion. It's not the yeah. So, so so many there's teachers out there that teach positions. We know with golf machine we have P1 through P8. Uh, there's other people that teach similar positions in the golf swing. That's one of the things I love about right balance is we don't really teach positions. I do believe the club needs to be in a good delivery window coming into the ball. I think that's something we see all good players do. And I really think this whole balance of the club and where the center of mass is affects how well we can control that club face and how center we hit the ball in the center of the face uh, has a lot to do with that too. Yes, and I think then we get into those wrist angles. That's why I did the the kinematic part of it is so that we understand that motion that will create uh, that movement of the mass of the golf club. So wrist angles, 3D helps adjust beliefs by showing reality. I know when I bought a camera that shot 240 frames per second eight and a half years ago, I found out what I really did, not what I thought I did. But you mm -hmm. have this database of 65 PGA Tour players, 12 major champions, 20 major victories, 10 captured while they were ranked in the top 10, and 13 more captured while they were uh, in the top 30. 231 PGA Tour victories. So, and that's just the database I use for the wrist angle. I took the top players. I actually have probably 120 some odd players in my database, actually. But I took the best 65 for that wrist angle video. And that wrist angle video is two and a half hours long. And if someone goes to SinclairGolf.com, uh, they can purchase it there. And that is, uh, I, I've watched it a couple of times. And I have some of my favorite things that you discovered that, you know, I really enjoy. But why don't you bring up uh, your PowerPoint uh, presentation and, and, and just walk us through uh, some of the things that you did in uh, your wrist angle presentation. Okay. Well, the most, the, the one that started it all is actually uh, this one right there. You can see that. Okay. Yes. Uh, won't have them on the presentation screen, but this, the lead wrist flexion is what started it all for me because I started to see all this uh, teaching that was going on that was more about flexing at the top or being flat at the top. And it was not jiving with what I was seeing with all the tour players coming through. 
So that one's kind of what started the ball rolling on the whole wrist angle video. So and let's go over. So if the left wrist is bowed like Dustin Johnson at the top, that is a flexion. That's flexion, which would, on this graph would be above this line right there. The white line. Right. The white line is zero. That's the wrist at exactly zero. Okay. And, anything and then above it, that, so above the line, it's palmer. Correct. It's palmer flexion. Correct. Below the line, it's Dorsey extension. Correct. So your, this graph is just showing when the wrist is flat, flexed, or extended. Right, and that is the database right there. That is the, that's one standard deviation. So the blue line is the mean, it'd be the average, and then okay. the top green and the bottom green is one standard deviation. So 68% of those players landed in that zone. So you can see there's quite a zone. <laughs> and it's, it's, uh, it's quite big. I mean, in, in this particular database, um, we have 31 degrees at the top different and all those players that you just went over, 65 players with all those wins. With just the, where the lead wrist is at the top. Correct. And my, the overall outlier would be about 60 degrees in extension would be the most I have a player in. So 60 degrees extended okay. to 40 degrees flexed. Wow. So 100 degrees difference in the whole database at the top of the swing. Wow. And so to me, I have always called that style. So we have all these great players. So the, 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 re, the wrist flexion at the top, it's more about the motion that we see that wrist do than it would be by any means the position. So if we go back to that, look, you can see that most players start in extension. That's average unless, you know, you would press the club forward a lot. Right. And then they all move towards flexion, taking the club right away, you know, to, to about right. club parallel. We could call that even just a rotation in the arms and hands too, right? Yeah, that's just basically what happens when you want to take right. the club away. You'll right. give it a little flexion and you'll right. rotate the forearm and, and that starts the club back to the inside and, and that's what happens. So that's obviously something that you would do. But I and want to get back to something you said because mm -hmm. I, I think this is really important. You know, what really started this was impact, right? that all these people want to have that lead wrist flat or even think it should be bowed at impact. Correct. But the truth is, and what your study found out, is everybody's lead wrist is going toward extension before impact. Correct. I have two, I have two outliers that actually go through just a little bit. And to be honest, I almost believe that's an error in the system. I don't think, I don't <laughs> actually think it's so close that I'm not sure we're getting exactly impact. So I believe maybe it could happen. And, and both of those players are faders. Right. So, and I bet their grip is really strong. I'm um, on one of them, yes. On the other one, no. Wow. Wow. Pretty neutral. But I mean, that really started kind of your quest for this, didn't it? Correct. That, the impact and the top, the, the top of the swing was, was what was really driving me crazy is why, you know, I was looking at myself. If everybody's teaching that way, why is it better? Right. You know, why is that better? Does that help me square the club better? And the answer was no, it was a hundred percent. No. Yeah. And so I went searching for my own self to find out, you know, where would that be better at the top to get in our good, positionals, you know, positions going down, and you can see how wide that database is. So if it's not the position of the lead wrist at the top of the swing, what is the motion that you see that flows that they have? It would be this motion that you're seeing here, a little flexion going back, and then as you pick the club up, you would extend, you start to extend, that just matches as you, you're going right. more radial, 
you know, in your wrist, you would want to extend a little bit. So you can see it in that graph. So as we go right. towards the top, it starts to extend. Right. And then the players are going to want to start to close that club face on the way down. So from the top, they start to close it. And then you can see right in here, right about just in between halfway down impact, that's when that wrist goes back towards extension. And so you can clearly see it, that's the motion. So when we look at some top players, let me get down here where I have a, a graph of a bunch of them, I believe. Let me find that one real quick. I think I have a bunch of them here from inflection. And then you can start to see all the motion. Well, maybe I don't have it on this slide. There they are. I'm gonna have to start the, just gonna move all this stuff out of the way here. Okay. It's not letting me start the program here. Bear with me. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes with Zoom, uh, it's not going to play a video. Sometimes in a yeah, power it's not a video. It just needs to. If I can start my uh, presentation instead of having it in this window, I don't see my little thing at the bottom that starts it. Let me see here real quick. Well, while you're looking for that, I, I want to uh, I want to share something here uh, that I think is interesting because uh, this was a student that I had uh, recently that was here this week and. You and I were talking about this before we came on, but this gentleman on the right, uh, it's interesting to me. We, we're seeing a lot of people wanting to keep this club head outside the hands going back. And obviously, this is extreme. And mm -hmm. it seems to me they always flop it. They always flop it here. But something that you talked about in transition is this this was one of the big things to me about your your video was at the top pretty much every good player the lead wrist went towards flexion and the trail wrist the right hand and wrist actually went more into extension and yet when he comes down you're going to see the opposite happen because he's going to start getting the shaft steep right there. Mm -hmm. you, you can really see it right there. And that's what we see with a lot of our higher handicap players, don't we? That Correct. the club, the hands go out too much toward the ball. And then so their, their wrist is going this way too much instead of going this way from the downswing. And that, that's what you saw with all those good players was that move from the top, wasn't it? Yes. And we actually saw that the trail wrist was a lot less style. The tighter, it was a much tighter window on the trail wrist. So to me, everybody's looking at the wrong wrist. And yeah. this one's much tighter than this one. This is style. And then this one's always going to end up in a pretty tight window all the way through the ball with the tour players. So and the it's trail wrist. It's interesting when you see a Sergio who is under the plane, mm -hmm. he, he tumbles it toward the plane. Right. Uh, and I just see a lot of golfers that it, it doesn't really show up in 2D video. And I don't think you really notice it even with your 3D. But that person that's got the club over the top going to the plane actually drops under and then reads the path to the right. <laughs> it's kind of crazy, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. They 
it's it's a you do see it in the 3d you'll you'll see how they they really want to at that point you know he's in trouble he's going to want to stand his hands up right you know and that's going to throw the path out and probably some heel hits and some nastiness going to go on and he probably really doesn't have a lot of control of the club face but if you hold that shaft but if you hold that shaft up to me there's a balance in the whole golf club that when the club has balance it almost swings itself through the impact area the club face squares tour players call it stuck when the club's not in balance coming Mm -hmm. into the ball and, you know, I think that's what we all feel. We feel that high handle block, hate that feeling. Yeah, exactly. That's when it does, does get stuck and you'll see the players lay it down too much. Right. And then now they're in, in big trouble. So at that point in the golf swing, you know, where you have there a shaft vertical, that would be about as far as you would ever want to see somebody what we call under. Right. When we talk about we want to make sure people understand what's under. So you see my little tumor here. Yeah. So what we're talking about is the force that you're putting on the hand. So if that force is going this way, under means that the force going through that little tumor right there, I'll get a little closer there. Yeah. The little tumor right there is going this way and the force of the handle is going that way. So that would be under. Right really probably only this much so it's not some wild gyration right. it's just a little bit and right. that from that point when we're you know shaft parallel at this point we want it actually going over right we want the club to come out right right well, we want that club you know tipping out this way instead of continuing this under kind of thing so when you see that crazy move that's you know, this way, that's just a little bit crazy. When it's really just a nice little motion and about right there, it starts to... Right. Then you have someone like Sergio, well, he's so laid off, he has to tumble right, right away. Yep. So that's that's what we talk about when we're talking about uh, under, and it's really a very small amount of the force going down the handle and then either this force being this way under or going through that mass over. Right. So a lot of people, I think, take that as, oh, well, I got a really shallow like coming down. And, and I think they get, there's the stuck feeling for sure. And, yeah, and I'm going gonna... to share this uh, screen that was just up. But here's, here's kind of what you're talking about. Here's another one of my students. So you see them a little across the line. And then now here's the club working the correct way right to the yeah. plane right yeah. so you can when i see it in 2d like that take it to the top yep and when that club i don't know if you can see my cursor but that club goes up and back away from the golfer you know they've done it right when you know and now you have your face you make sure they didn't have a huge casting motion so you're saying when the club goes up and away correct that's what you're saying Right, and then you'll see his hands come more out towards the ball. The club's right there, and is it going to go up and away? Yes, it does. Right. So that's that mass on the club. You can see it back there going up and behind the golf. Right. And then there he is. He's getting to the plane and uh, not too late, and boom, there he is right in a good position coming in the ball. Yeah, he's in a great position there. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's upper core, player, he's an upper core. Look, he's hardly rotated at impact. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but still, it's just so important to get this club right in this area now. To me, John, I just, yeah. I'm big on this. Yeah, I think that's right. I think from there, it's going to be hard to miss the ball. From your other student earlier, he's having to do a lot of manipulations. costing. Yeah, there's, there's this change in planes coming down into the ball so all right so did you find that slide you were looking for no i got down that but <laughs> what it would show and now I'll, I'll go back in there and share it and uh it's just not letting me control the 
that's our problem there. It's just not allowing me to control my right presentation is the problem. Why don't you go to impact? Cause that was, we got a few minutes left. So, uh, well, there's the different, there's an extended outlier with the cup left wrist and, and then a flexed outlier, Dustin Johnson, and then the pretty swing in the middle. The, yeah, nice, right. the, the normal nice flat thing. left left wrist at the top. And these are all major champions. Wow. So that, those, that's how different that style is. I will run back real quick and, and show you the, the uh, that lead, the trail wrist real quick since we talked about that. Everybody can see the difference on how much tighter it is. The lead wrist. Well, there you can just see the difference. That's the on top here. That's the lead wrist, and on bottom, that's the trail wrist. So you can see those windows are much tighter on the trail wrist. Right. So that's a lot less st style than you would see up here on that. And as we come through the corridors of impact, it even gets tighter. Yeah. So that's what we see on that. So we can go, we're going to show you that motion. I'm going to go into the actual 3D program. That way everybody can have a little bit better look. But this is just such interesting stuff. You know, I, a lot of times when I get beginners, John, I've had a lot of success with just, hey, your arms rotate on the backswing and your arms rotate on the through swing. Mm -hmm. And just having that in their golf swing just to get started is just such a good way. Because what do we see with beginners? We see their, their right arm doesn't really rotate much externally on the backswing, does it? It's not a ton. It's a little bit, but it's not, it's certainly not a ton. So if we just right. take a five iron there, swing and we change that over to So I'm just still seeing your lead and trail wrist flexion extension graph. Oh, all right. Okay. Well, we'll stop that share and then we'll start a new share that shows us the correct stuff. There, you seeing that one? Yes. Okay, so here we have a trail wrist five iron and a lead wrist five iron. And then there's your avatar. So as we go down, we can start to see that one little motion and I'll add in just to watch how that club closes as we move through the hitting area. So you can kind of start to see as we go back to the top of the swing, you're going to see there's an extension. If you look at that green one right there, that green one, that's extension. So this player is an extension. Okay. That player is actually me. <laughs> okay. That's your so lead. There I am in extension. Top. I'm 11 degrees in extension at the top. Okay. And then you can see this graph right here, when it's below the line, that club is opening. So we're twisting it open. When okay. it's above the line, we're twisting it closed. Okay, so keep in mind, I'm also a fader and you can see that club's closing pretty rapidly there through as impact. Right. So as I start past the top, you can see I start to flex that wrist right away. And you can see that club starts to close right away. Right. And the, the right hand in me, I give it a little casting motion with the right hand before I extend it. Right through here. So as we move down, you can see that club's moving up and away. Right. 
So as I move through there, we'll go back a little bit and see that club, just like in your 2D video, you can see that club moving up and away. Right. And you can see my right trail hand really start to extend right there. So it's really yeah, start to yeah. extend as I'm starting to flex. And at this point, you can also see that right past here, both arms will start to supinate together. So both those arms are actually doing this. So people think that's crazy when you right. actually going apart right there. And that's helping that club stay behind as the hands are getting forward. Do you actually right. think of that when you swing a golf club? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> what Thank what you. I do is I show the player to do this and it happened. Do that. Right. So get that club in a good position so that we can get the hands ahead of the ball. That's what has to happen. Right. And so while that lead arm is really turning over, the actual back arm is like a pitcher. It's actually supinating until right up at the end. Right. And and a drawer, you'll see, see the blue line, that's the supination happening of the trail arm. And since I'm a fader, you can see that doesn't happen till right at the last second when it actually pronates. A draw of the ball, you'll see that pronation happen a little sooner. And since I'm a fader, you see now in that, that position, as we come through, I definitely have the club on that plane, but a little more out, you know, a little more yeah. Yeah. swing direction pointed to the left. So I can swing that club a little bit to the left. Right. And you can even see how much I actually roll that club over and still fade it. So John, we got a few minutes left. Talk about impact, because that, that really is what started you to use all this, this gears and, and use your, your 3D and use what the you're measuring position. with all this stuff. So. When everybody is looking at that flexed wrist at impact, you still see it today. Everybody's like past X impact and showing people in these flex positions. Those are just, you know, a, a position. If you were to, to frame it back, you know, if I'm right here at, at, you know, past impact, if you were to frame it back, I'd be more flexed. Right. And frame it back, I'd be more flexed. So the wrist is actually moving in this right. fashion as it's actually rotating. It's moving like this through impact. So we wouldn't want to hold that position. That is a huge problem. And number right. one, you can't. This club weighs like 100 pounds. You can't stop this from happening. So that hold off move will end up in high rights and low lefts. Well, the only way you can do it is with slow club head speed and you want to hit a quail high. Yeah, and you'd have to have super, I'm talking about it better be 50 yards or less. Any much more than that, this can't it's stop. It's still going. It's still going. We really want to encourage that motion that, you know, like a Frisbee throw or something. Right. You come through and you, you're feeling that and not holding that off and realizing that if you have a strong grip, a lot of my strong grip players, you can take like a, uh, be a good example would be a Webb Simpson. You know, he is no way, or, or call Peterson, there's no way they're ever going to get to flexion. No. So being in flexion is not necessarily, it's more grip oriented than it would be right. actually what somebody needs. So I think that's a huge fallacy out there. The club needs to be leaning forward, obviously, but you can lean it forward with a stronger grip or you can leave it, lean it forward with a weaker grip, a Hogan coming through there. But you got to know that everybody's wrist is going very rapidly in this direction. And, and I, I think that's I think that's really important with the driver. Oh yeah, because the driver, the club head's going so fast that this is going faster than a seven iron for sure. Sure. And and on top of that, if you're trying to hold it, what you, all you're doing is slowing the club down even more. Right. You know, when you when you start to try to resist that motion and not let it go, you're just your speed's just going straight down. Well, the slower the, the slower the grip moves, the faster the club head can move, right? 
at some points, yes. <laughs> but if we can get that to slow down and snap it, we're, we're going to do pretty good. I do see some players that hold it, that can really bomb it, that can keep it the same speed up to impact. But most players are slowing down. There's a decal in the grip. Yes, and, and big one sometimes. That's where all the, you know, we all talk about the alpha torque and trying to figure out what that is. And, you know, that force coming back at you is definitely, in my opinion, would be going negative. Yeah. And you're trying to whip that club around because you can't keep up with it. Well, John, it's been great having you on the show. And if, if anybody would like to go see John, John is in Euless, Texas at the Sinclair Golf Training Center. And if you want to find out more about John and his programs, you can go to SinclairGolf.com. John, always great to have you on the show. Uh, thanks for what you do because you're yeah, helping all great. of us. I get to see you this time instead of on a phone. I know. This is so much better than just audio. But uh, I, I love learning from you. And, and, you know, it's always great to have you on. All the best. Okay. Thank you very much. We'll see you. I'd like to thank my sponsors, Tideless, FootJoy, the Ritz-Carlton Golf Club Orlando, and the Red Sky Golf Club in Vail, Colorado. For more information, you can, uh, you can go to LarryRinker.com. Till next week, keep swinging.